You're on 94.1 FM, 3WBC, with Jerry Gerges presenting... And now here's Jerry Gerges, 94.1 FM, 3WBC, the voice of the inner east. Hang around and let your problems surround you, there are movie shows downtown. Maybe you know some little places to go to where they never close downtown. Just listen to the Having me on your show, Lynn. Uh, for our uh, listeners, um, British-born, Melbourne-based artist Lynn Sarah first took up painting five years ago. As we know, we're on your on the internet, you actually transitioned from being a scholar. You've got a doctorate in philosophy, a scholar in international relations and politics. How did you go from that to being Australian prize-winning artist? Well, what happened was that I was working as a scholar, um, an academic, yes. but then my father got dementia and my mother wasn't coping very well because they were both in their 80s and it got harder and harder for them. So I became a carer for my dad and support for my mum. And then my husband at the same time was diagnosed with um, quite an aggressive cancer. Yeah. And we had to go to Peter Mac for treatment um, weekly and then daily for almost a year. And I found what I needed was something to take my mind off things or distract me um, whilst I was doing this. But I couldn't really go out and leave home. I had to be around right. on call. So I decided to paint, which I wanted to do for quite a while, but had never had the chance to do. And I wanted to paint in oils. And so I bought an easel, yes. a canvas yes. and some oil paints. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> Now you did so you did study a little bit of art a very long long time ago. Oh yes, look at high school um and then I did one year at RMIT yes. in but sort of majoring in printmaking rather than painting. But then I went overseas and did furniture design instead. <laughs> Just for something else to do. Yeah, there's so and, many. There's so many questions, Lynn. Sorry, what were you going to say? And then I and then I came back and um, I did some emergency teaching for a while, and then I decided I needed to stimulate the brain, so I went back to university, and right. that's where I ended up in international politics. And how did you like that? Oh, it was wonderful. It was challenging and in, interesting. But the area of um, work I was in was in women's human rights and it did get depressing too because the situation for a lot of women in the world is so desperate and so tragic and yep. takes a long time, as we know, for things to change, even in Western democracies yep. where women enjoy, you know, better human rights, obviously, in some parts of the world they have no rights at all. Mm. Yes, and yes. I found that quite over time that you know becomes a bit wearing. But I loved um, the research and I loved the writing, and but it felt as if I was going round in circles. Um, just uh, going back on to um, some of the hard decisions that you had to do in. Um, and sometimes it could be easy to look after your parents and your loved ones 
and to yes. stop everything. And we all can relate to that, Lynn. That is absolutely, we've all done it, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners. Um, oh, yes, I've got that. friends who are in the middle of it now, in yes. the you know, that are um, facing the same dilemmas. and But at the same time, I, it was, you know, it was wonderful to have the opportunity to spend that much time with my parents yes. in their latter years. Yes. And I, I really, it was hard for them and me sometimes, but much harder for them. And um, I got to spend time with my dad in those last four or five years that I wouldn't have done if he'd been fully well, which, of course, you you want your parents to be fully well but yeah. um given the circumstances i saw it as a real um time to treasure yes. and to be able to help my mum because you know they look after you when you're young yes and it's nice to be able to help them in their older years if they need it uh, that's a very uh, a lovely reciprocal thing that we should all all have they all t they, they, there's a lot of people that are currently now talking about arts in the community as a yes. as a prescription yes and look i i think it's uh, look i think any of those activities like some people you know it's singing in a choir um i wish i could sing but i can't <laughs> um, Nor can i <laughs> singing in the shower is about it. My father always wanted to be an opera singer and he always, you know, was trying to sound like Pavarotti in the shower, but uh, sounded like a, a monkey squealing to us. But um, it was, you know, some people it's choir, some people it's drama, you know, acting, some people it's painting. But I, my dad was a GP and he always spoke to people. He always talked about everyone needs their islands of pleasure. And I know what he meant. It's you need that time to yourself or time out. And it's got to be something that is pleasurable and takes you away from the stresses of your life. And for some people, that's gardening. But definitely art is, you know, fantastic. And I, there was, um, I went to my local bakery to pick up some bread the other morning and the girl behind the counter said she'd been to a hen's party, which was actually held in a sort of, painting studio a group of them right. sort of spent three hours with champagne and learning how to paint <laughs> and um, I thought that was a good combination and she thoroughly enjoyed it but she said now I'm, I have a much greater admiration for you at, at how hard it is yes. um, but at the same time that was just her first time you know with a paintbrush and she really loved it and she plans to do it again um, you know, the, there is a huge, and and honestly, uh, there's a lot of people now resonate with what your dad is saying, an island. Um, yes. And, and they talk about moving away from, you know, the biomedical model that we've always grown up with, and your dad would have practised being a GP. Well, he, he did to a certain extent, but he also, he was kind of ahead of his time in yes. the, because he qualified in the 50s and into the 70s he actually studied hypnosis oh. and then he also went on and studied acupuncture and he found the combinations of things um, would help people like um, uh, hypnosis was really useful for people wanting to give up smoking but also for managing pain and he he would say it's a combination of things rather than throwing everything out the window and doing one or the other. Yep. It's finding the right thing that suits the person, that Correct. you're the individual. And a friend of mine who suffers chronic pain is incredibly sensitive to medication. She cannot take painkillers because it really upsets her tummy and other things but she's found other ways of managing her pain so it's really having lots of different things on offer and that can help people however it works for them um absolutely um it, it is now you know it's been set in uh, in concrete in a lot of the um, grey matters in, in GPs and, and in that health environment where 
you you know you gotta embrace cultural community support uh theaters art and you've done very very well <laughs> You've done extremely well. well. Actually, the, the art also was therapeutic for me to an extent too because um, depression runs in my family. Right. And I do have, I've had episodes struggling with depression and the art really helps with that. That's, so. you, you, you must be one of those ambassadors to cultural community support, but you're a professional artist. You, you, let's talk about the 150,000 Doug Moran National Portrait Prize that you won. Well, that was amazing because it was my very first oil painting <laughs> and it was a self-portrait and I <laughs> painted this pa- and I thought, what am I going to do with it? And I thought, well, I'll put it in this prize to see if I'm on the right track, you know, if, if it's okay. Yes. And I and I ended up winning it, and which was an amazing experience because I got to meet other artists that I'd only ever sort of read about or seen, you know, on the papers or in magazines, you know, Australian artists right. um, that have been practising for a long time and are very experienced and things. So I got to meet these other artists, which was fantastic. And... Um, the money was amazing and it enabled me to go to Paris and go to all the galleries um, and see art that I've only ever seen in books yep. and get up close to study, you know, the techniques and the brush strokes and the, I mean, it, nothing compares to seeing art in the flesh, you know, because in a book it's flat. Yes. Even if the colour's great, it's tiny and a lot of these paintings, the scale is part of it, how big they are, and then also getting up close to be able to see the texture and the colours. Uh, it's just, yes, and Europe is just full of it. I mean, there are just art galleries packed everywhere, and um, it was almost exhausting. <laughs> but <laughs> at the same time, you know, brilliant. So. Thanks to the Doug Moran Prize, I got to see art that I'd only ever seen in books and only dreamt of being able to see in galleries. And but uh, it, it compounded, uh, Lynn. Um, it got it, it went from that to the uh, Kindred Spirits. Talk about yes. that. Yes. Well, in uh, so that was um, four years ago, and in, yep. in, since then I've continued painting and um, and selling my work and. And then entering other prizes, but not. I did it quite a few after the first year, and I got into a lot of the finals. But yep. I, it just became a bit tiring, right. and it, and also quite expensive because the artists carry the costs of shipping and insurance and things. And I thought I just need to kind of focus on painting what I would love to paint, explore a bit more about ideas rather yes. than just... But then um, I had this idea for this very large painting, which um, it took me quite a long time to do, and the timing was good to enter into the Porsche Guiche this year. Yeah. And lo and behold, I've won that one, which is fantastic <laughs> because it does make me feel that... Well, it, it, it kind of... <laughs> <laughs> makes me feel that it's the Moran wasn't a one-off. Right, yes, yes. That, and I have improved, I think, I would hope since then, like I've continued to progress and I would hope that that Porsche Guiche was a recognition of that and that gives me confidence to keep going. Well, I don't I, I don't think you're lacking any confidence, Lynn. It's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's one for... Uh, let's talk about your website, which is yes. www... Dot. Um, linosavory.com.au Right, so it's lino... Or .com, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't com. think there's au yep. necessarily, but it'll come up whichever, yes. whatever you put in. But, um, yeah, look, the website I was advised very early on by yep. a friend of mine to get a website. Yep. Um, and so it's a local company that um, is called Artscape. Yeah. And um, they're great because it's... They support artists and they do kind of, they provide the platform and you load up your photographs yeah. and you 
put in the writing you want to add in the the explanations or statements or whatever and and so people can go to the website to look um, and I get professional photographs taken by a photographer who specializes in photographing art right. um, I, it's if you can afford it it's a really good idea to get that done professionally yep. and then I've also got Instagram so between the two people can you know see my work but also get in contact with me through Instagram which right. is much easier in a way than the website and I've met lots of other artists through Instagram I chat with other artists or I reach out and say you know I love your work and I've met people that I would never have known existed <laughs> so and it did start as Instagram started as a photography and artist platform it's changed a bit since then but still it's a good place for photographers and artists to put their stuff up and and talk to people and connect with others i want to move on to um yes. a couple of the other things and we t you know uh we talk about art um yes. that gives you the creativity um it it stretches your ideas it turns light bulbs on um it's challenging um yes and we talked quite a bit, and I, you know, I'm glad that we've covered the arts and the health because there is a correlation, a very strong correlation between the two. So as far as the arts challenging uh, your emotions, uh, are you a happy artist? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, you don't spend eight hours a day painting if you're not right happy doing it and when i say happy you have as you say there are challenges like anything um there are ups and downs and things can go wrong sometimes but overall i mean it's just thrilling and when i get up in the morning i think what would i prefer to do yes. it's always painting wow. you know I, I would i prefer to go to you know go to the park or would i prefer to paint generally it's painting <laughs> Would I prefer to go to the supermarket or paint? Paint. Paint. And I, I tell you, the house housework has taken a tumble since I started <laughs> painting. But my husband's picked up the slack, which is great, and he's now well doing done. the vacuuming and washing the floors. But I must say, <laughs> it's kind of, you know, do I want to be remembered for being a good housewife or a good or painter? A painter, yes. Yeah. Did, did, did art, Lynn, um, did art uh, and prize winning help you uh, uh, to be more playful, creative, um, in control and yeah, empathetic I, I or would, none? No, I'd say all of those in, in different degrees or right. different ways. I think the main thing was it gave me the confidence as in the sense of, yeah, this is worth doing in terms of there's – a lot of costs involved in the canvases and the paint you know it's not a cheap hobby shall we say or a cheap endeavor right. um, although you can buy like anything you can buy canvases and materials at all sorts of price ranges but at the what should I say I don't want to say the elite level because that's not a um, it's not elitist but at the professional level I suppose the canvas is you know linen from belgium or italy um the oil paints are are quite expensive the medium so there's a lot of costs involved that you wouldn't want to keep doing unless you um felt confident that they would sell i suppose in the end i want other people to enjoy them as well i don't really want a pile of canvases stacked up in my dining room you know where, where, um, where it's do, much nicer to have them on walls being enjoyed by others and to our listeners uh, i'm quite enjoying the conversation with uh, australian artist lynn savory lynn we want to talk about um your on uh, the website uh, does it have an events and can we can the public turn up to some of your works where where do they go well at the moment unfortunately not right. um only that uh well 
there, uh, in Sydney, there was the That's Portia right. Quiche was on show for two or three weeks. So yes. all of the prizes generally have an exhibition that follows right. the opening. Um, but that has just ended and yes. the painting's on the way back. So right at this minute, I am trying to build a body of work. So I'm trying to get a collection of paintings together that yep. hopefully will be in an exhibition. But where that exhibition will be has yet to be decided. It may even be in New York or Paris or London oh. uh, rather than in Australia. Oh. So, yes. <laughs> I'm just weeping away because I was, I was I was really hoping you'd say, oh, it's going to be in Melbourne next year. Well, yes, but I'm... Um, Unfortunate, well, not unfortunately, if yep. it is New York, Paris or London, that yep. would be great. I'd yes. love that. Yes, but course. at the same time, and the thing is, my work takes a long time to produce. So I'm not prolific. I don't yep. do a painting a week. So to, to get an exhibition of, say, 12 paintings together is going to take me probably 18 months to two years. Right, okay. Now, yep, so yep, yep. some artists can have three exhibitions almost at once. I'm only going to have one at a time. Right, okay, yep, I understand. You did mention right at the beginning of our chat, you did start off and you, you did a bit of printmaking. What was all that about? Oh, that was a long time ago, like <laughs> 1976 <laughs> when I was 16. Right. Um, but at RMIT, um, I started their art course there but it really wasn't suited I, or I, I the kind of thing that was happening and also there most of the students were mature age students at that time right so they were in their 20s and I was just 16. All oh, right I understand and it, I, it was yeah and we'd only been in Australia we'd only emigrated about nine months before right. and I didn't know Melbourne at all. My parents were living in Warrnambool, which is where my yep. dad was a GP. Yep. So I came up to Melbourne on my own, just turned 16 and it was all a bit too much for me, crazy, you know, yeah. to be 16, all these, and they were all smoking a lot of marijuana <laughs> and going to parties and <laughs> it was just kind of like, oh my Lord. So I'm, um, <laughs> I, and the kind of work they were doing, I, it was just not my kind of work. So I I ended up taking refuge, really, in the printmaking studio because no one else wanted to do printmaking. Right. Um, but I really was only there for that, you know, about six, seven months. And then I, I decided to leave and go and do furniture in England. Yes, yes. Um, Lynn... Um it's uh, been an absolute pleasure speaking to you and, and we are very thankful that you, you've given us time, uh, allocated the time tonight to just to tell us the transition, um, why um, and the wonderful time you have spent with your parents looking after them. And in that, because we've talked quite a bit about art and health and, and they yes. are talking about it quite um in depth now and and looking at cultural community support and all forms of of arts so oh yeah look it's i think it's a really and i think covid during that time a, a lot of people were able to rethink you know rebalance their lives a little bit and yeah. i know a lot of people sort of took up art or other activities you know um that now they're sort of looking at carrying on if they can because it did have an impact a positive impact on their health and well-being mm, mm, mm. and got them through uh, you know covid which in melbourne was quite you know challenging yes and i think they've seen the benefits of it and are now trying to build this in to health platforms yes. because these things are beneficial and let's face it, it's better than taking a load of pills. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you so much once again. Oh, no, thank you, Jerry, and thank you, listeners. Okay, bye now. Take care. Bye.